The purpose of this template is to get me writing and arranging in um, a really detailed and really efficient way so that I can get from my imagination to the uh, captured state, um, in this case MIDI notes, as opposed to uh, score. Hi there, my name is Vince, I'm a composer, and in this video I wanted to test drive a new template that I've been working on uh, for my composing, specifically geared towards arranging. I'm sort of banning myself from uh, just bashing notes in on string pads, like ensemble, full ensemble string pads or spiccato patches, and instead I'm trying to nudge myself in this direction of arranging as part of the creative writing process. So I'll just show you what I've got set up currently in Logic. Um, the key difference about the way I've done this is that I've been leaning into what are sometimes referred to as uh, performance samples or um, physical modeling instruments. You can pretty much just perform in long notes, medium notes, short notes, um, trills, all just from a single instrument track. Um, and so, you know, there are various debates about whether this is the best way to go in terms of um, realism and, you know, general orchestral mock-ups. But I think for me, the thing that really excited me was the fact that you have this ability to capture a lot of information about the performance, just like you would on a manuscript paper, um, in a very short space of time, in a very organized way so that you can keep track of all the parts in the logic session very easily rather than getting bogged down in loads of different articulation patches and so on. So here I've got um, my main sort of string ensembles here. So as you can see what I've done is combined the sample modeling violin ensemble patch which is a very versatile very agile patch with a similarly versatile patch the uh, performance legato from violins one uh, spitfire symphonic strings here um, this just gives it a bit more um, beef to the sound but it's not really important what I'm leaning into here is less um, the perfect workflow for creating orchestral mock-ups and more the perfect workflow for writing and arranging and then I'm sort of mentally thinking of the production stage as something quite separate so once I've captured all the ideas in a fairly accurate way then the question of how do I get it sounding like a real orchestra you know which samples do I need what kind of ambient setup do I need um, maybe I need to get some live players in etc that's kind of a separate uh, game if you like. So the strings, you know, similarly throughout I've got this combination of sample modeling and the Spitfire. Then the brass I've been using in the Infinite series quite a lot recently by Aaron Venture. Um, similarly these are all just playable with one instrument patch per instrument um, so you don't need multiple patches for multiple articulations. And as you can see, I'm using a tech control breath controller here. Um, I'm controlling vibrato with bite pressure, and I'm using the mod wheel to control um, the vibrato speed. Previously, I was using aftertouch to trigger vibrato on all the instruments. Um, what I found is with this this new breath controller, which has the bike control, I find I get a lot more control over the um, the gradation of non vibrato to full vibrato. Whereas with aftertouch, it's, it was more or less an on off kind of thing. Um, and uh, importantly, I've got the the mapping set up so that it's pretty much consistent across all of the. Um, all of the parts that I'll be performing using the breath controller. So all of the strings, all of the woodwinds, all of the brass. The setup is always bite for vibrato, um, mod wheel for vibrato rate, etc. Then we've got the woodwinds, which for woodwinds I'm using the SWAM audio modeling woodwinds. They just sound 
slightly better and slightly more um, expressive and flexible to my ear, but there's really not much between them um, and, say, the infinite woodwinds. And very simply, I've got these just running into a group here with some Valhalla, same with the brass. I've got a slight top end shelf and the vintage verb, um, strings. But you know, as I say, this video isn't really about production. What I thought I'd do is just give you a quick tour of this template and then get into using it um, so that, you know, partly I want to test it out for myself a bit more and also just to kind of share the process and, and see what we discover along the way. And then the other thing that's cool about this template that I think is going to be useful um, when I'm writing is that I can access multiple tracks and play them simultaneously just by playing chords. Um, so this helps in the scenario where I don't want to slip into using string pads, but it's still quite helpful to be able to play chordally at the keyboard. Um, this allow, allows me to do that, but then for the voices of each chord to then be split out to the different tracks. So let me just show you quickly how that works. In Divisimate over here, we've got um, all these channels, 1 through 32, and each of them is um, assigned to a different instrument. And that corresponds to the input MIDI in channels here. So um, say I wanted to do a low string pad, rather than just reaching for a full ensemble string pad uh, instrument, what I'm going to do is arm these three tracks and then head over to Divisimate. And I've actually got it already set up on a preset here. Um, what this is doing is the low um, notes in this range of the keyboard are going to be automatically mapped to the bass. And I can set that wherever I want. And then the top two voices um, is going to detect which is the, the top voice, number one, and which is the second to top voice. So I can play um, two notes at once by chords in the right hand. So if I just record a little bit. It's done a pretty much perfect job there of understanding um, what was going on in the chords and splitting out to the different MIDI. So that's very handy. Um, so you'll see how this works in practice. What I tend to do is have it bypassed a lot of the time, which means I can just use the tracks normally and just record one at a time. Um, then sometimes if I want to trigger multiple patches at once in that kind of way, then I'll um, either use this template and set up the matrix however I want based on the orchestration that I want to be able to mess around with. It's kind of like those Symphobia patches that have like pre-orchestrated material. Um, or I'll choose one of my setups here. So this is like designed for capturing three parts at once. Um, I won't go through it all fully now, but hopefully it'll make sense when you see it in the context of me um, messing around and creating a piece. So yeah, um, let's just see what happens. I haven't really planned anything. I just thought I'd do a kind of quick, uh, come up with a melody and a quick sort of sketch of an orchestration. And um, yeah, the main goal here is to kind of stay within the constraints of a real ensemble, especially the strings. Um, and 
avoid a situation where I'm doing lots of note bashing, grabbing this and that sample patch, loading things up on the fly and just getting a bit losing, losing track a bit. What can happen is that you end up with quite inconsistent parts. And um, there's something really nice about the unity and the the um, cohesiveness of a well-arranged uh, ensemble piece of music when every line, every part has been given a lot of care and a lot of attention. And so that's the kind of vibe that I'm trying to sort of invite into my music through partly through this template and other experiments like it. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens. Um... So, okay, so one idea I had was one of the song names that somebody gave me recently to go in my uh, Pyrex Dish of Destiny um, was Robots Rowing. So I thought maybe I'd use that as a starting point, as a jumping off point. Robots Rowing. So um, probably something quite rhythmic. So what I'll do is start off with pianos, maybe. that let's quantize it um too panicky. Do, do, do. 
like there's something quite nice about having like a very yeah, yeah, kind of lyrical overarching melody something like sort of that gives you the idea of like a nice breezy summer's day then with this like rolling thing underneath maybe so imagine that in the strings is it a slightly pompous I hear that as um, operatic vocals I'll just um, just add that in Idea down. My apologies to singers everywhere. Robots rowing, robots rowing. No. Don't know. Doesn't matter. It needs like a <laughs> something to. I mean, I'm being a bit literal here. But, you know, it's something, isn't it? It's an idea.
Okay, well... Uh... Okay, okay. So let's start thinking about instruments. Woodwinds and maybe strings. Maybe this whoosh is actually a melodic idea. cellos in uh, cello and bass in octave so I'm gonna do my I've got a preset here so that's just doing octaves this T means it transposes so I just play one note uh, and in theory <laughs> Quite good, isn't it? Quite like that, because that's quite like rocky, isn't it? And I imagine this being quite staccato, actually. Clarinets, flutes, oboes. Ooh, oboes. Yeah, maybe double reedy kind of sound. doesn't work range-wise. Maybe it wants to be that kind of low middle. Bassoons? Maybe I'll split it up between two groups. Yeah, I quite like it, staccato. See, what's cool is it takes into account my velocity on the keyboard and my breath and comes to a conclusion about how sharp the attack should be. Um, so it's great, you can really kind of uh, hone in to the sound that's in your head rather than just being given one short note by the library that's been pre-recorded. 
and also the exact length of the strength of the um, short notes. So this is what I mean by precise information capturing. It's kind of taking what's in, in my imagination and getting it down in a form that even if it's not the most realistic sounding in the world, it is accurate as far as the information about the note length and the attack and so on. I don't want to belabor that point too much, but it really is a amazing um, upgrade in that ability to kind of capture information. So like forgetting about realism, forgetting about production value, thinking of that as a separate game. This is just like a hyper quick way of just capturing ideas, getting them down on paper. <laughs> Um. And then flute and um, clarinet answer it, maybe like contrast. Uh, I've already forgotten. Add some little detail. like about the short one is that it kind of pops out a bit more against the the violas what the violas are doing so that's trumpets isn't it maybe muted trumpets ba -ba -ba -ba. so let's find the trumpets What's nice is, is um, again, compared to most conventional orchestral templates, of which I'm not a master, I tend to just load stuff up from an empty project most of the time, but um, I've seen other people, they have like reams and reams, you know, hundreds and hundreds of tracks. And uh, if nothing else, this approach um, for the writing phase does keep the track count down, which is quite nice. <laughs> quite sort of John Williams-y. Yeah, we said um, maybe mutes. notice that I'm not just attempting to drag the MIDI over but I'm actually using this moment as an opportunity to mess around with the part and see if I can make it even more tasty and juicy for that individual instrument. And think about how to kind of voice it and articulate it on the instrument, what sounds good for the trumpet because obviously the piano just kind of sounds a bit like piano y. You know, it's like a crescendo, I might be not.
Ah. My vibrato isn't working for some reason. Okay, let's try that again. I mean, in orchestral music, obviously, the vibrato tends to be pretty understated, if, if at all. Just like maybe there on the end. Did you notice? Add the second part. to A flat. Maybe. Kind of A flat dominant. A flat dominant. Record the second half of that phrase because I wasn't quite sure that it captured it. So, what I find with infinite brass is sometimes on those really quick bits, the notes don't quite speak, so then I like to use the sustain pedal to bypass the legato. For the purposes of getting this idea down. If I want, if I'm being picky, I can shorten these. But yeah, let's not get too bogged down in the weeds. So here's like an example where 
Um, you know, I just want to add a little something to connect it to the next phrase. If I was just dragging MIDI around, I might not have come up with that. So let's keep these lower strings going. Keep the idea going. Let's do that trick again. dropping the bass there for a second. simple, I think.
kind of want to do something a bit crazy in the bass part there. got a sketch pad here which is a poly full ensemble patch but I'm just using it not to record but just to sketch I mean not to sketch just to hear um, to noodle full on unison. Some sort of wavy seasick vibes. Maybe the two lower strings in close harmony or something. Uh, Oh, hang on. 
that's the wrong patch. Uh, what I want is this and this. So sometimes, like that little note there that I just deleted, it makes a bit of a mistake when trying to split out the parts, but it's pretty good on the whole. I think like, um, you know, I'm gonna cheat a bit here because I've got a really specific sound in my head. Maybe an octave up. got to bypass that every time you want to use the instruments normally. Yeah, I feel like they're worried about falling in, these robots, because if they fall in, they'll get electrocuted. Um, that's the anxiety. can strengthen the um, main melody. Trombone. There's obviously loads to fill in here if I were to try and do a full orchestral arrangement with all of the instruments. But I feel like what I'm doing is getting the most important colours, the ones that I want to be most prominent in. And then if I had um, an unlimited amount of time, which I don't sadly, but if I did, um, I would just keep adding things low in the mix, doubling supporting um, or just leaving space you know you don't need to add parts for the sake of adding parts a really big fat brassy ending I feel like <laughs>
So what's the base? It feels like I need something to hold down the base. pizzicato just momentary pizzicato there so um, I've actually hidden the pizzicatos um, but again I'm trying to not use a pizzicato patch just specifically say that the bases go to pizzicato here so that when they come back here I know that I can't use pizzicato or I have to rethink how that section works all things that would never normally go through my mind I still quite like the idea of something going bomb, so maybe it's um, maybe it's hmm. oh, maybe it's nice having that be a sustainy bit.
See, I want some low strings or something supporting the harmony. string line there seems to diminish the impact of it coming in here so let's keep it low like string short string stuff
Definitely need some harp stuff there at the end. Um. Harps, harps, harps. Oh. What I was doing there was just recording it in slow and then using option drag to stretch the region so that it would time how I wanted it to time. I think all that's needed now is a couple of cymbals and maybe snare drum, um, maybe bass drum. the snare actually on. Let's make it a bit drier. Super dry.
just a bit distracting. I think I'll leave it. Um, what about Piatti though? Pizzicato note. Feels a bit lacking in the low mids, doesn't it, there? Is out of interest. <laughs> G flat to B flat ish. Still don't quite know what's going on harmonically, but I'm sure I'll figure it out later. Maybe a trill there.
quite nice about this method is that I can now see that there's like quite a big hole here in violin 2 and there's a big hole here at both violins at the start so maybe at the start it'd be nice to have some little subtle pizzicatos So I think violin twos can just do what violin ones are doing here, and uh, similarly with the pizzicato. So there we have it, um, a short sketch of a composition, still lots more that I would do to flesh out the arrangement, especially with percussion and um, just making use of all of the forces in the orchestra. But what's quite nice is now I can see quite clearly uh, what's still left to do, what parts have might have holes in them, um, and just really feel like I'm making full use of all of the different parts and shaping each part as a part rather than just as a piece in the bigger puzzle. Um, trying to give each part really singable lines and so on. Um, so yeah, I think this method overall was quite um, successful for that kind of approach. I hope you found this interesting to watch. Um, look forward to any thoughts that you have. Feel free to write in the comments. And all that remains to say is thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video.